the vertex form, sketch and graph, then identify the axis of symmetry in the vertex. All right, so we're um, completing the square just like yesterday. So let's look at number three. What do I need to factor out because x squared has something other than just the one? The negative. So let's factor out the negative. So when I do, I get x squared, and we're only going to use the first two. So that's going to give us minus 4x plus the blank. The negative 8 is not part of that factor. Leave that as it is outside and add another blank. And everything revolves around the middle term. So we're going to take that middle term and do what? Half it. Half it. So when I half it, I get negative 2. Box it and square it. Negative 2 all squared is 4. Now, if you're thinking to write minus 4 at the very end, be really careful. What is actually represented by this 4 when I distribute the negative? It is negative 4. What is the opposite of that negative? Positive 4. So always take the outside and multiply it back and then take that opposite, okay? So from there, the reason we box it is because it is the what? Answer. The answer. So our vertex form is going to look like that negative we took out, I can't do anything about, so leave that alone. X minus two all squared. On the outside, negative eight plus four is how many? Negative four. Negative four. So that tells me my vertex. Inside again, is all, it's always the opposite. So what's the X coordinate? Two negative, two, negative four. And our axis of symmetry is always the X value of that vertex. And I'm gonna show you guys visually in a little bit. And the only difference here is, when I have a negative parabola, is it going upward or downward? Downward, downward. so just kinda a little reminder right there. So let's do a quick sketch. Draw your X and Y axes. Two negative four is right two. Down one, two, three, four. And that is my vertex. And we know our graph is gonna go downward. And how wide you make it, I'm okay with whichever one you choose. So then our axis of symmetry. This line right here is a line that's going to cut the parabola exactly, in the ha exactly half on the left and the right. And that's where x equals 2 is coming from. Okay? Everyone good on this? Yes. So everything is the same as yesterday, except we're graphing the vertex and making it go up or down. Okay, our next one was number what? Five. Five. Okay. Do we always have to write I want you to. It's a good practice. All right. What do I need to factor out on number five? Three. So whoever chose this, pretty clever. Making me do all the work, right? <laughs> all right. So since I'm taking out the negative three, we have remaining x squared. And plus how many? Eight. <clears throat> Eight x. And you add a blank. The 41 is not part of that distribution. Leave that alone as it is. And add another blank. <clears throat> And go ahead and circle your middle term. So our phrase is, we take this term and do what? Half, Half it, it. box it, square it, which gives me 16. 16. But then don't write minus 16 at the end. The actual number represented by negative 3 times 16 is negative 48. 48. So opposite of negative 48 is 48. just 48. <clears throat> so let's highlight the box just because. So our vertex form. You leave what you factored out. Then I have x plus 4 all squared. And on the outside, it's going to give me what? Seven. Plus 7. So we know our vertex is going to be in what coordinate? Negative 4, Negative four 7. <clears throat> and then our axis of symmetry will be x equals how many? Negative 4. Perfect. Let's graph that. Now, what if you were like, I don't have enough room to create 20 tick marks? Could I be kind of a little lazy right here and say, hey, that's negative four, and hey, that is seven, as long as it's within the same quadrant or correct quadrant, I'm okay with it. And then we know because of this negative on the outside, the graph is gonna go up or down? Down. down. Okay, what else do I need? Symmetry. Our symmetry. Oh. Bless you. <clears throat> okay, ready for number eight. 
Going up. Up. So that one concaves down. Concaves down, correct. I like the terminology. Good job. All right. For number eight. Shepard, let's read the instructions on number eight. Graph and fill the information in the box for a given function. Be sure to plot the vertex, y, intercept, and mirror point on the graph. So we want to go ahead and factor something out. What is that? Two. Two. So I'll take out the two. That's going to give me x squared minus how many? Two. Two x, and you leave a blank. And then the five, the minus five is as it is, and add another blank. Ooh, I may not have enough room. Not good. All right, at that point, we take our negative two and half it, which I get negative one and all squared. How many is negative one all squared? One. one. But what's the actual number represented by this? Negative two. Two, so opposite of two is? Negative two. You guys are rocking it. So I have two times, that box is my answer, x minus one all squared. And on the outside, I get minus how many? Seven. Seven. Now, just by looking at this, do we know if it's concave up or down? Uh, up. up. Because x squared does not have a negative in front. So we, let's kind of do a little sketch. Concave up looks like this. Where is my vertex according to what we have completed the square with? One negative seven. One negative seven. And our axis of symmetry always stems off of the what? The x. The x. Okay, the y-intercept may be the only one where we need to do some work, but let's kind of skip on that real quick, and then we'll get to it in a little bit. So let's go ahead and plot the vertex 1, negative 7. And I think I want to show you guys a trick. Everyone ready? Kind of? Okay, on our y-intercept, okay. When y'all had your normal x squared... From the vertex, when you went to the right one, it also went up one. But did you also know when you went to the right two, it went up four? Yes. Because one squared is one, two squared is four. One, one, two, four. Right? Whoa. Whoa. So then, the fact that I have two in front means it's going to be going up by a factor of twos. So the way I would graph that is instead of going right one, up one, it is right one up two. So in this case, we have right one up two. Right one up two. How many do you think I'm gonna go up if I go to the right two? Eight. Eight, because normally two squared is four, but this is um, vertical stretch by two, so double the four is eight. So we got right two, and let's count up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to be lazy on the next part. Because I know my axis of symmetry, it's going to go right here. Right here. And I know that means it's equal parts to the left and the right. Why not go ahead and count how many over to the other side as well? More like critical thinking. Let's go ahead and graph this parabola. Try to make it more like a U, not a V. But it's okay if it looks like a V. It's pretty narrow too, so... Why not? So just by that, could we see where it crossed the y-intercept? Yeah. It crossed that 0, comma, five. negative 5. Now, let's say that uh, point was not clean. Can I plug in the 0 into this value right here and solve for it? Yeah. Yes, you can. Okay? This happened to be a clean graph, so why not show you a little trick? Is everyone good with this one? Yeah. Questions? What's the mirror The mirror point? as in the axis of symmetry. So to the right two, left two. From that axis of symmetry, right one, left one, okay? Our domain, because we have an arrow going left and right forever, what do we call that back in algebra two? Negative infinity two, positive infinity. And I heard someone say all something, all real numbers. They mean the exact same thing, all right? For the range, is it forever going up or forever going down? Forever going up. Now, I like interval notation. So my lowest point is negative 7 inclusive. And inclusive means I do not see an open circle. No holes. And it's forever going up, meaning infinity. Could you have said y is greater than or equal to negative 7? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 